Hey, how are you? Well, I had a client come in over the week and they bought a couple of works on paper and she was telling me how she would like to start painting again. And I talked to her about some of the painting videos I have up on YouTube and, and she said that they were still a little bit uh, too far out for her or too complex maybe. And, uh, and I understood that because my brother's a computer guy and when he shows me something, he's just like, you got it? And I'm like, no, I don't have it. So uh, maybe that's how it is with people who are just getting started painting. So the idea here is to have fun. Uh, I always want to have fun. That's really, it's that buzz you get from making something. So with that in mind, I'm going to do uh, a paint by numbers today. So if you like this, uh, let me know and maybe I'll do a couple more down the road. Uh, so the first step here is to go to my website and print out a uh, paint by numbers post and it should be sized at a five by seven and then you can just cut it out and you can either paint directly on the paper or you can glue the paper to cardboard or plywood uh, or even canvas and if you really want to get a little more serious about it you can print your um, image out on a heavier paper like a, a postcard paper so let's go over here I'm going to go over to the mat cut the paper out and glue it to a board I've got indication lines here and you could use a straight edge, which I can't find right now, so I'll just cut along the line. I'm using wood glue to stick the paper to the board. This is a piece of masonite, uh, but you could use Elmer's white glue, you could use matte medium. Really whatever you want. This isn't that serious, so uh, just use whatever you have. I used a piece of cardboard to spread the glue out. It's not very heavy. It's just a nice thin coat. And I'll try to get the drawing smoothed out. I've let the glue dry for about 10 minutes. You can speed that up with a hair dryer if you want. And I've got a, a bit of a wrinkly surface, but if you were to use a heavier paper like uh, a cardstock paper on your printer, you would probably have a nicer surface. So I'm going to dive right in here and just paint the background red. And you can be as neat or as sloppy as you want. This is really just practice. It's just getting your feet wet and getting started. Now, if you don't know this, the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. And you'll see a lot of contemporary artists use those colors. Ellsworth Kelly is a big color field painter. He would make big paintings just squares of red, yellow, and blue. If you don't want your paint to blend together and you're using acrylics, meaning a water-based paint, you can use a blow dryer to speed up the drying process. So I'll move on to these stems and I'll use a little green and just to change it a bit, I'll add some of this yellow. It's a little too green. I think uh, I don't like this at all. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, change that a little bit. I'll try adding a lot more yellow to it. Yeah, that's better. For the day lilies, that's what these flowers are, I'll use yellow right out of the tube. This is cadmium yellow. The ground here, what the vase is sitting on, I'm using blue. And this is ultramarine blue. I'll use a little blue, a little white, and get this light blue. Now I'll move on to the glass or the vase and I'll use just a little bit of black and some white You get kind of a, a gray color I guess. Black and white makes gray. And paint that in. And then this little part here in my view maybe represents a wall and what it does is it defines space. So I'm going to paint this black and what happens then 
is you immediately have a foreground. So this is the foreground, this is the midground, and the red is the background. Well, that didn't take very long, and I enjoyed making the painting. And I do think it's a good way to get started painting if you've never started before or if you've never painted before and have thought about it. And I'm definitely borrowing from art history here. These colors are borrowed directly from Matisse's palette. And you might want to Google Matisse Red Room and you'll see what I'm talking about. So at the very least, I think that these are a lot of fun. Let me know if you think this is something that you'd like me to do more of. Uh, I probably will make a few more of these because I can see my daughter really enjoying uh, this paint by numbers concept. It's a little bit different than probably the paint by numbers that you can buy. Uh, I don't even I don't even know when the last time I saw a paint by numbers book. But anyway, uh, I guess that's it. Have a great week. I'll see you soon.